So why do ears pop on airplanes? To answer this question, we have to start out pretty big. What does the ear actually do? Basically, it takes sounds, which are pressure waves, and transforms them into signals that the brain can interpret. This transformation involves a complicated fluid-filled structure called the cochlea. It's about the size of a pea and shaped like a snail shell. The ear has a problem, though. The pressure waves it wants to detect in the air aren't actually strong enough to activate the fluid in the cochlea. It takes more energy to start the fluid moving than air, so if the waves ran straight up against the cochlea, they would mostly bounce off. This is similar to what happens when you put your head underwater, like at a pool party, and you can suddenly barely hear anyone else outside the pool. The sound energy is mostly being reflected at the surface of the water, rather than making the water vibrate so you can actually hear anything. The pressure needed to vibrate a material is known as its acoustic impedance, and the problem we're dealing with here is known as an impedance mismatch. You can imagine something like a line of little dominoes running up against bigger ones. The signal is lost. To solve this problem, you could collect the force of lots of little dominoes and channel them together to topple a single bigger one. This is similar to the ear's solution. Your eardrum acts as a collecting membrane, which is pushed in and out by the pressure waves in the air, and it transmits that force down to a smaller opening in the cochlea called the oval window. The difference in surface area between the eardrum and the oval window basically magnifies the pressure that you're dealing with. The force is carried between them by the middle ear bones, or ossicles, which you've probably heard of. They're the smallest bones in the human body. These bones also provide mechanical advantage. They act like little tiny levers, and they convert the eardrum's big, weak movements into smaller, more powerful ones that can be better received by the cochlea. So together, this difference in surface area, as well as the lever-like action of the ossicles, helps to bridge this impedance mismatch between the air and the fluid inside of your cochlea. Now, the ossicles aren't entirely passive middlemen in this situation. There are actually some little muscles which can tighten to damp their movement. These muscles act like an automatic volume control system. They contract when you're chewing or talking to reduce the sensitivity of your ears. Many people can activate them voluntarily, and you'll hear a sort of low rumbling sound. When I activate mine, it feels like I'm moving something in the back of my throat, like I'm about to start yawning. These muscles are part of the reason why it's hard to hurt your own ears by yelling, while someone else can hurt them by yelling nearby. There's a much more developed version of these muscles in bats, where it's important to protect the hearing system from damage during the extremely loud noises produced during echolocation. Now let's take a little step back. We have the eardrum, collecting pressure waves from the air, and these tiny little bones on the other side, bringing those impulses to the cochlea. The system as a whole allows the relatively weaker movements of the air outside your head to reach and activate your cochlea, so that you can hear them as sounds. You need air on both sides of the eardrum for it to move freely. But if a pressure wave comes up against both sides at the same time, the eardrum won't move at all. So what we need is a little bubble of air, isolated from the outside environment. And this is basically what the middle ear is. So you've got these two little bubbles of air in your head, behind each eardrum, where the ossicles are. Now we're getting to the root of the problem. The pressure of the air in those bubbles is crucial to hearing properly. If there is high pressure air in there, then the eardrum would be pushed out all the time, and you wouldn't be able to hear anything. If the pressure is too low, you get the opposite problem. It needs to be just right, so those variations in outside air pressure that make up sounds can move the eardrum back and forth. Luckily, the outside air pressure is usually pretty constant. Airplanes, however, are a different story. The insides of airplanes are, of course, pressurized, but as you gain altitude, there's still enough of a change to affect your ears. As the pressure drops, your eardrums get sort of pushed uncomfortably outwards, and you start to have trouble hearing. Now, everyone knows that the solution to this problem is to chew gum. But why should that help? Well, nature's solution to this whole pressure problem is a tiny little pressure relief tube that goes from your middle ear to your throat. It's called the eustachian tube. It's usually shut tight to keep the air in your middle ear still so you can hear properly, but it opens naturally in certain situations, like yawning or swallowing. You're probably familiar with the little clicking noises you hear when you swallow. That's the sound of your eustachian tube opening and disturbing the air in the middle ear. So chewing gum basically just causes you to move your jaw around and swallow a lot, which encourages your eustachian tube to open and your ears to equalize with that famous little <coughs> What you might not realize is that that popping noise isn't just in your head. In fact, you can hear someone else's. Try putting an ear against a friend's and having them swallow. You should be able to hear a little click as their eardrum shudders from the disturbance in their middle ear. It's actually shuddering enough to act like a tiny speaker and send sound waves into yours.